But yeah, bought a new BMW. Let me know if you want me to make a video about it. It is December 13th. It is a Friday. And today, after I take you through the account, I have two news items. And I want to show you how to set up a call debit spread. That's going to be the topic of today, all right? So I want to take you through the account. I do have uh, what seems like an Ulta high, but it actually isn't. I'm sitting very, very near an Ulta high. Um, you're going to see a large number. And that number is because I put in a couple extra grand. So, oops, that is not it, but no reduce, okay? This is totally professional. Um, so, I'm sitting at $77,145. For those of you who are listening only on audio, some do, you never know. And I was at 75, so I'm really close. My, if you minus uh, $2,000, I'm really close to an all-time high, which was 75250 so now I would be uh, at 75145 All right. So I went down a little bit today. I was an all-time high early in the morning, but now it's leveled off. Um, there's nothing wrong with me. I think I'm just tired. That's why my voice sounds like that, so apologies. All right, so I have two news items, but before I do that, let me um, show you how to do the cold debit spread, all right? So what is a cold debit spread? Um, cold debit spread is when you think the stock's going up, and you want to make an options play, but you want to keep your costs down. You don't want to lose that much in premium, right? So what you want to do is you want to buy an option, but then sell the one above it. So that way you uh, limit your uh, your premium exposure, okay? So I'll show you how to do that right now. Of course, we're going to work uh, with Apple because I always do my examples with Apple. Who doesn't like Apple? Biggest One of the biggest companies. Um, one of the three big ones. All of them, uh, by the way, half the size of Aramco, which had an IPO recently. They're trading at like $2 trillion. It's crazy. Look it up if you're interested. It's an old company, Saudi Arabia, I think. So let's say, first thing you want to do, obviously, pick a date. Before you do any option plays, you got to pick a date. So let's say December 27, just for kicks and giggles. I think, let's suppose that I think that Apple's going to go up um, by then and I want to buy a call so what I can do here is let's say about the add the money call one two hundred or nearly add the money sorry a little bit over two hundred seventy seven and a half dollar so I buy this call and now I would have to put up two hundred and fifty eight dollars I would have to lose in premium if I want to take advantage of that uh, move right but what if I think that, yeah, okay, it's going to go up, but it's not going to go crazy, right? It's only going to go up to like one, one, you know, 280 or something like that or below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap my losses, okay? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm going to cap my wins. And the way I'm going to do that is by selling a call right above it here, December 27th. I'll sell a call, all right? So you see here. 258 minus 176 that will that will total me $82 in premiums that I'm going to lose now if I'm wrong instead of 258 which is a lot cheaper and so what's the catch you ask well the catch is that I'm only capturing this movement here between 277 and a half and 280 so I'm only going to capture that so basically I am risking $82 to gain $250 that's it. If I didn't do that, then I would be risking $258 by buying this lower option here, the 277.5 one. And I'd lose all that money if stock didn't go up. However, in exchange, I am betting, I am um, being rewarded with unlimited potential. Now, unlimited potential sounds good. But it's not that realistic. Like Apple in a week is not going to go to $350. All right. So capping your potential might be a smart thing to do if you want to decrease your cost of operation here. All right. So cutting costs. So 
I don't normally do this trade, but actually I should. I think I'm just too optimistic on the high potential of um, price moves. But really, that's not how in reality it happens. It's a much slower grind. And Apple is no different. It's a really large company. It's not going to move that much, even if it does move up anymore. I mean, it's been it's had a really, really humongous ride since the end of last year, beginning of this year. So it's up like, I don't know, 60, 70%, something crazy. So <clears throat> anyway, it's a big company. It moves slow. So especially maybe for the market, for funds that are really slow moving, you could you could do use this and make, you know, double your money. And you can place a few of these trades. Now, because it only costs you $82, you can leverage that up, right? <laughs> Excuse me. You can say no reduce. So um, you could say, all right, well, I have $250 to spend. Now, instead of doing buying one call for that $250, you could instead buy three calls, three call debit spreads, right? And you could theoretically, if the price moves up to 280 or let's say 280 plus a little bit, you would get $750. Whereas if you just bought a call straight up, you'd actually get less money right you might not get anything look the break-even price for this call is 280.08 so if that price happened right i would just i would actually be losing like eight dollars in this trade if i bought this call but if i did three debit spreads instead if this price is reached i would be gaining money right almost uh you know many times over really so you're foregoing the potential of a big run and you're capping your money over here. But um, you get a lot more for having just a little bit of a, a gain. So it's a way for you to play the market if you think there's going to be a little bit of a gain. right? There's always some way to structure the options plays to make it to optimize what you think is going to happen and make the most out of it. The secret, of course, I mean, the, the challenging part of this whole operation is knowing what's gonna happen. Right? That's the hardest part. So if you knew that uh, Apple is gonna go up incrementally, then obviously this is probably the best play. But if you think Apple is gonna have an explosive move up 15% or something like that, obviously you just wanna buy the call option, right? You get unlimited gains. So um, that's how you set up a call debit spread. It is the opposite of a call credit spread. If you recall, I had a previous, I have, a, I have another video explaining how to do a call credit spread. A credit spread is betting that the price is going to actually go down, so you just collect premium without having that much money. And uh, a call debit spread is a bullish play, a semi-bullish play to where you're capping your gains, and then, well, actually very bullish, but for a little bit of a gain, right? So that's how you do it. It's got a lot of opportunity. I haven't really done these plays. It's just not, it hasn't been my style, but I actually want to try to get into them. I want to try to do a few and... Um, I'll let you know how it plays out, of course. Now, I have other news. So what are the other news? Okay, so the, the news here is that I got rid of all of my leverage. I'm completely leverage free right now. So I have no leverage. So I got rid of the um, put calls because it was getting a bit ridiculous, honestly. Like, I was, I had $12, they were cost $12, the, the Apple puts. So I had sold them a long time ago and all their value got, you know, I was going to wait till January 17th, but I figured out like, why? It's just $24. And um, if these $24 basically protects me if Apple goes down below $200, which it probably won't. But in the odd chance that it does, like I won't be stuck with a huge bill to pay. Excuse me one second. Let me turn off the heater real quick. No reduce. I'm not adding this out. What do you think this is? So um, anyway, <clears throat> so I got rid of the the put calls. They cost me twenty four dollars for both of them. They used to cost like two thousand dollars initially, or twenty eight hundred, or something crazy like that. So I got like ninety nine percent of my money back. Um, I'm pretty happy about that. So now I'm completely deleveraged. I have no leverage. And it doesn't say it here in the, I checked on the website, it doesn't really say it anywhere, but um, I, maybe under settings actually, I haven't checked under settings, no. 
I don't think so. But anyway, I checked on the on the phone and Robinhood is giving me $87,000 that I can borrow. That's enormous amount of money um, purchasing power wise, right? Compared to my $77,000 account. On top of that, 5,000 of these dollars are in emerging market bonds, which I'm willing to part ways with if the right opportunity arises, which by the way, give me monthly dividends, no big deal. So that leaves me with $92,000 of potential purchasing power. Uh, now that's probably gonna decrease a little bit because if there is a market crash, my purchasing power is gonna go down with the, with the level of the account, but as it stands now, that's what it is. And it's quite a bit. Um, I plan on taking full advantage of that. Uh, I did I do a video of way to use leverage and deleverage when times are good, leverage up when times are bad. So um, I did do a video on that. No one can argue the times have been bad right now. Times have been really good. Uh, market is just tearing a new one and everybody's behinds, right? And um, it's time to deleverage, really. Now, let's see if there is a bear market. If there isn't, this account is invested a little bit into stocks. I have all kinds of uh, funds and things like that. I have some Apple, you know, I have, um, look, I have some real estate related things, you know, some global dividend funds. Um, this one as well is a manufacturing, US manufacturing company that gives a nice dividend. You know, I have, oh, this real estate, Russian market, whatever, you know, some uh, emerging market stuff. So I have, you know, the uranium and whatnot. So I do, I am invested into things. I'm not like net short or anything like that. So if the market goes up, I'll be fine. I'll st I'm still gonna have some gains, but uh, if it goes down, then I'm ready to pounce. Just like I did last uh, December, if you recall. Let me back you up here and pull out the old chart, the old famous old chart. So this is when I start taking this seriously about August 28th. So I was cruising sideways for a while and then uh, I turned out. I turned a little bit bearish, and so my mark, my account, of course, is always net net bullish a little bit. But I was like 60, 40, 60, 50, 65, 35, something like that. Um, maybe 55, 45 bull to bear, and so I only dropped a little bit, and then I went really aggressive, and then just started buying up, you know, um, some Apple and things like that, and silver. And then I started selling it off and tapering off, and now my my gains have slowed down a little bit, but um, I still continue to go up. So my old chart looks great. So I plan on doing the same thing I did in this dip here. If we have a similar dip of 15, 20% in the market, that would be great. Um, I plan on being very just as aggressive. And if you want to know why I'm long-term bullish in the market. You can um, see my rationale in a different video. I did, I did one about that as well. I don't want to repeat myself too much, you know. So that's it. I mean, that's the second announcement. But wait, there is more. What is the third announcement? Well, it's the second piece of news, rather, is that bought a new car. Super excited about it. Um, let me know if... You want me to do a video about it? Like, I'm not, I don't do very good video editing, but I want to try. I want to see if I can do like a lifestyle type of video. And not that my lifestyle is so rich or anything like that, but um, it is a pretty nice car. It's a M6, it's a little bit older, 2007, but it's well, really low miles, very well kept. It looks brand new. It just looks absolutely amazing. So maybe I'll take it out to the beach or something like that, do some pictures or some video, whatever. Um, if someone, if you guys are interested in seeing that, like, if you want to know more about um, what I do, <laughs> besides just mark and sit in this room and give you video logs, then let me know if you're interested. I'll put in some effort and uh, maybe I'll try to make it nicer and more entertaining or whatever. If you like cars, especially, um, it's really nice, man. It drives like a dream. Just picked it up today, so I'm super excited about it. Um, but yeah, bought a new BMW. Let me know if you want me to make a video about it. All right, with that said, peace out.